Iron Man 2008. In the arid expanse of the Afghanistan desert, a convoy of military Humvees navigates its way. Among them is Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., a billionaire weapons developer, engaging in light-hearted banner with soldiers on duty who seem genuinely entertained by his charismatic personality and flamboyant public image. Unexpectedly, the convoy falls prey to an ambush by unidentified gunmen. Despite the soldiers' valiant efforts, they are swiftly overcome. Tony, seeking refuge behind a large rock, witnesses a missile strike bearing the unmistakable Stark Industries logo. A fragment breaches his body armor, throwing him back and rendering him unconscious. Rewinding 36 hours earlier to Las Vegas, Tony is on the brink of receiving the prestigious Apogee Award. A presentation unfolds, chronicling Tony's extraordinary life journey, from a child prodigy with a penchant for technology to the current CEO of Stark Industries. As Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes Terrence Howard prepares to present the award, Tony is conspicuously absent. The award is accepted by his trusted associate, Obadiah Stane, Jeff Bridges. Later, Rhodey discovers Tony reveling in a casino, and a chance encounter with reporter Christine Everhart, Leslie Bibb, leads to an unexpected night at Tony's Malibu mansion. The next morning, Christine encounters Jarvis, voice, Paul Bettany, the AI managing Tony's residence. Tony's efficient assistant, Pepper Potts, Gwyneth Paltrow, aids him in catching up on business matters. Heading to the airport, Tony and Rhodey engage in a conversation, revealing the former's carefree demeanor. Upon reaching Afghanistan for a demonstration of the Jericho missile system, Tony opts for a separate Humvee, setting the stage for the ambush. Later, Tony awakens in a cave, connected to a makeshift device powered by a car battery. Dr. Hoenson, Sean Tubb, another captive, explains that he couldn't extract all the shrapnel from Tony's body. Inson's electromagnet invention prevents further damage to Tony's heart. The captors demand Tony build them a Jericho missile, resorting to torture when he refuses. Hours later, the terrorists, members of a group called the Tin Rings, show off a huge stockpile of weapons, all made by Stark Industries. Tony appears to give in and starts building the missile, but he has other plans. With Inson's steady doctor's hands, and using palladium collected from his weapons, Tony constructs a tiny version of an arc reactor, streamlined from a much bigger design used at his company's headquarters. The power output is enough to run Stark's heart for 50 lifetimes, or something much bigger for about 15 minutes. It will also be enough to keep the shrapnel in Tony's heart from shifting any further and killing him. Inson tells Tony a little about himself. He lived in an Afghani village called Gulmira that was attacked by the Ten Rings. He doesn't know if his family is still alive. He also reveals that he'd met Tony years before at a conference, but Tony was so drunk that night he probably doesn't remember him. Tony is spurred and seems to have a change of heart. He begins to draw up plans for a weapon system, an armored suit powered by the arc reactor that he will wear and use to defeat the terrorists. Midway through construction, the head of the Ten Rings, Raza Farin Tahir, arrives and threatens to torture Inson, angry because he thinks Stark is not working on the Jericho as they wanted. Tony bargains for Inson's life, saying he makes a good assistant. Raza gives them one more day to finish. Working furiously overnight, Tony completes his project. Inson straps Tony into the completed armored suit, telling him the way out of the cave. They set off a bomb inside the cell door as a distraction for the guards as Tony powers up his suit. Inson realizes that they will not have enough time. Over Tony's protests, he grabs a gun and runs off to distract the surviving guards. Tony, his suit now fully powered, muscles his way through the cave. The guards try to stop him, but his suit easily deflects their weapon fire and he beats them off or kills them. He also fires one of the suit's missiles at Raza himself, who is flung out of sight by the blast. Halfway out of the cavern, Stark finds Inson, mortally wounded. Inson reveals that this was his plan, sacrificing himself so Tony could escape. Inson's family is already dead, and he will now see them again in the afterlife. Tony tearfully thanks Inson for saving him. Inson's last words to Stark are not to waste his second chance at life. Tony turns his suit on the remaining terrorists, igniting flamethrowers and firing missiles. He destroys their stockpile of weapons, but some of their larger caliber weaponry begins to damage his suit. He uses a rudimentary jetpack to launch himself out of the valley. Not long after firing, 
His jetpack fails and he survives a crash in the desert. Stark leaves the suit behind and hikes through the desert until a couple of US helicopters fly overhead. A group of soldiers, led by Rhodey, come across Tony. Rhodey is overjoyed to find that his friend is alive. Tony is quickly flown back to the United States. Upon his arrival at Edwards Air Force Base, Pepper wants Tony to receive medical treatment, but Tony says that there are only two things he wants, an American cheeseburger and a company press conference. So Tony appears before a group of reporters and, clearly humbled and no longer the arrogant CEO he was before his capture, announces that he intends to shut down Stark Industries' weapons manufacturing division immediately. At the same time, Pepper is approached by Agent Phil Coulson, Clark Gregg, the From Strategic Homeland Intervention, Enforcement, and Logistic Division. They want to talk to Tony about his capture. Pepper schedules an appointment for them. That evening, Obadiah confronts Tony about his actions furious. Obadiah knows that the stock value for their company, and, by extension, their financial status, is going to take a serious drop because of this announcement. Tony wants Stark Industries to move forward with ARC Reactor technology, but Obadiah thinks that the ARC Reactor is nothing but a publicity stunt. Through the conversation, Tony ends up revealing his Mark I chest piece to Obadiah but refuses to allow the device to be studied for production. Stain convinces Tony to lie low for a while so the company can sort things out. Pepper watches Jim Cramer deliver a scathing news segment on Mad Money on the declining value of Stark Industries when Tony asks for her help. He's created an upgraded and much more powerful mini-arc reactor, the Mark II chest piece, but can't install it into his chest without someone to help, his assisting robot, dummy. Tried to insert the arc reactor but failed and Pepper's hands are small enough to fit inside the chamber in Tony's chest. Pepper accidentally yanks out the cords for the old reactor too soon, putting Tony on the verge of cardiac arrest. They manage to complete the process in time. Tony tells Pepper to destroy the old model since he's not a sentimental person. Tony visits Rhodes and asks for help with a new private project. Rhodey does not agree with Tony's approach. He thinks Tony is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder because of his capture and needs time to recover. Tony turns to his other best friend, Jarvis, for help. Tony's plan is revealed to be an upgrade to his armored suit, referred to as Mark II. The suit from the terrorist cave was Mark I. Tony, studying a 3D CGI mapped image of the Mark I, discards many of the components, streamlining the design. Meanwhile, Raza, having survived his battle with Stark and severely scarred by the rocket attack in the cave, searches the desert, gathering all fragments of the Mark I suit that Tony left behind. Tony decides that the first thing he has to do is to perfect the armor's flight system. Since the leg-mounted jets proved too unstable, he creates repulsors for the feet and palm-mounted stabilizers for balance. Pepper comes in when he is testing the stabilizers, and they find that it also creates a powerful repulsion beam that could also be used as a weapon. In his first test, the repulsor blows him backward. Pepper leaves a paper-wrapped box on Tony's desk as a gift. Obadiah visits Tony and reveals that the board of directors has filed an injunction to gain control of Stark Industries. Tony isn't worried. He still maintains controlling interest in Stark Industries. After several failed and painful attempts, Tony perfects his flight system and is delighted at the prospect of flying. The Mark II armored suit is soon finished. It looks like a heavily streamlined version of Tony's Mark I armor. Tony connects with Jarvis to monitor the progress in the suit. Against Jarvis's advice, Tony takes it out for a test flight, and he is thrilled by the suit's functionality. Tony pushes the limit for high atmosphere flying, but at such great heights the freezing air causes the suit to become coated with ice and his power supply shuts down. Tony is barely able to reactivate his thrusters in time to avoid crashing into the ground. Stark returns home, but the armor is so heavy that it smashes through three floors of the house and he crushes one of his prized sports cars. As Tony recovers from his crash landing, he opens the box that Pepper left behind earlier. Inside is the Mark I arc reactor, encased as a trophy with the message, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Tony analyzes more data and decides to rebuild the suit using gold titanium from an old project to solve the icing and weight problems. He instructs Jarvis to add some hot rod red trim to the next suit, codenamed Mark III, then leaves to attend his annual benefit dinner while the new suit is being assembled and painted. At the charity event, 
Tony meets with Agent Coulson, who still wants to learn about Tony's incident. Tony leaves to dance with Pepper, and they share a moment together in the moonlight. Christine, the reporter Tony slept with prior to leaving for Afghanistan, angrily confronts him, showing him photographs of his weapons being used by a terrorist group the previous day in the remote Afghan town of Gulmira, Inson's home village. Tony confronts Obadiah on the matter, and Obadiah reveals that he is the one who filed the injunction against Tony. Obadiah calls himself an ironmonger, and has no qualms about selling Stark Industries weapons to both sides of the conflict. Tony returns home, furious. While there he watches news reports of the worsening situation in the Gulmira region. He tests modifications to his hand repulsors, turning them into a weapon and blasting out several glass panes. When the new suit is completed it is fitted to his body by an automated robotic system. Stark flies off to Gulmira at hypersonic speed, determined to right his company's wrongs. In Gulmira, terrorists are rounding up civilians for capture and execution when Tony shows up. His Mark III armor is more than a match for them. Within seconds, he defeats the first group of terrorists, using his advanced weapons to take out several without any innocent casualties. He leaves the group's leader, Raz's chief lieutenant, alive and defenseless for the villagers to take their revenge on. While flying to find his weapons, Iron Man is shot down by a tank shell. When he gets up, a second shell barely misses him. He responds by shooting a mini-missile at the tank, destroying it. Using the palm repulses he designed, he destroys the captured Jericho missiles. After they are demolished, Raza arrives in time to see Tony fly off. CENTCOM at Edwards Air Force Base detects Tony in flight, mistaking him for a rogue drone. Colonel Rhodes is asked about the status of any new developments. He contacts Tony, who claims that he knows nothing about what is happening. In the meantime, Tony is confronted by two F-22 Raptors. He tries to outrun the jets, but they are too much for him. Tony calls Rhodes and reveals that he is responsible for the unidentified craft. Rhodey is furious about Tony sending in unauthorized equipment, and horrified when Tony explains that the equipment is actually himself and his new invention. Tony is hit by one fighter jet, sending him flying into the wing of the second jet. The pilot is forced to eject, but his parachute fails to open. Iron Man, still under fire, flies in and deploys the parachute in time to rescue the pilot. Tony convinces Rhodey to pass off what happened with the jets as a training exercise. After Tony arrives back at home, Pepper catches him while the robotic system is removing his suit. The disassembly is not going as well as the assembly and Tony quips that Pepper has seen him in situations that were much worse. Meanwhile, Stain pays a visit to the Tin Rings camp, revealing he'd paid the organization to capture and kill Tony, but they realized who Tony was and had demanded a much higher price when they made their tape. Using a high-powered sonic device that induces temporary paralysis, Stain immobilizes Raza and takes the remnants of the Mark I armor they have gathered. Stain then has his men execute everyone in the camp. Tony tries to talk Pepper into helping him believing that nothing else matters but saving the people who he put in harm's way. Pepper is moved by Tony's dedication and agrees. She goes into Obadiah's office with a flash drive program to copy files from the computer. As Pepper sifts through stored files, she finds a video from the terrorists proving that Obadiah was responsible for Tony's capture. Obadiah comes into the office and sees her at the computer, but Pepper manages to hide what she is really doing. She leaves the office, but as soon as he powers up the computer, Obadiah realizes what she was up to. On the way out, Pepper sees Agent Coulson and tells him he can have his interview immediately so that he accompanies her safely out of the building. Obadiah meets with his team of developers who are working on his own armored suit based on the Mark I. They have rebuilt the components, but they cannot miniaturize Stark's arc reactor. Stain is furious but relents when the lead developer tells him he's not the genius Tony is. Obadiah realizes that he has one other option. Stain arrives at Tony's house and paralyzes him with the sonic weapon. Obadiah yanks out the, the Mark II chest piece from Tony's chest, taunting him about how it will be the flagship invention in a new era of weaponry. After he leaves, Tony realizes that he has only one hope for survival, the preserved arc reactor that Pepper gave him as a gift. He staggers down to his workshop and nearly dies while trying to retrieve the reactor, which is handed to him by Dummy.
I know.